Good morning, folks. It was nice tracking last night's tsunami generation with you on Twitter, but that's about the most positive point to be taken from last night's huge seismic event in South America. Magnitude 8.3 is a tremendous earthquake. Buildings swayed, some injuries have been reported, but alas, it's still dark and a full account of damage is still hours away. The earthquake struck just off the coast of Chile near what is commonly called a subduction zone, where the crustal bodies meet and overlap. The tsunami waves were as high as 15 feet in some areas, and luckily, we expect very few more large waves across the Pacific, even as it is indeed forecast to make minimal impacts across the ocean. This is a subduction thrust, the most common tsunami maker. In terms of earthquake factors, it was indeed the final day that the earth-facing coronal hole was present. During the event, the trans-equatorial portion of the opening directly aligned with Earth, and despite the magnitude of the coronal hole area already turned, it was the only trans-equatorial portion for weeks that we've been just stuck in positive polarity. We hit the coronal field sector yesterday, and negative is on its way. But let's look at the coronal and polar interplanetary fields. The power appeared in the September 14th and 15th position five days ago, but it began shifting back in rotation. 24 hours ago, the northern polar fields let out a scream like we haven't seen in years, and by last night's earthquake, you can see that the red, powerful position had shifted into the 15th and 16th of September. Can you spot the next corona hole on the left at the equator? It's four to five days away, and we're moving on. We saw no major eruptions over the last day on our star, but we indeed have filaments and high energy. Left side, coming in with the coronal hole, are two enormous plasma filaments. The southern portion is more than 600,000 kilometers long. It is trans-equatorial and an absolute beast. The northern rope is a bit later to the party, but nearly 400 kilometers long, making for brother and sister filaments nearly 1 million kilometers long coming in. Then... We also have the high energy. At spaceweathernews.com, we see the solar flaring continuing to rise, finally hitting M-class range this morning. The culprit is exactly who we expected. The leading southern sunspot group has a delta-class magnetic structure in the center. We can watch the flashing begin and build in that sunspot area as it turns past the Earth-facing position. No CMEs to speak of. The solar wind is relatively calm, but for some denser waves in the stream setting a bit of instability to Earth's shield, but nothing major. The top article today is about hot Jupiter formation. It turns out that planetary formation might not take as long as scientists have long believed. Top weather alerts today follow convergence lines in the United States across the lakes area. Europe's three lows have now formed around one node with a southwest swinging convergence line. And down under, the convergence cuts across both New Zealand and the Queensland coastline. Website members, have no fear, we'll be discussing the quake factors in more detail in this weekend's edition of Fly on the Wall. Submit your questions at suspiciousobservers.org slash direct to S0. Less than one month until observing the frontier, chat with Billy, Mr. Too Tough Yelverton. Hear professors and researchers sharing the fruits of their labor and be shocked at how many people think just like you do. Tickets at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.